Quakers game, and then they uh, it got. I think it was the was it the Parker Brothers. Is that the guys who do all the board games? So. They're Hasbro. Hasbro, yeah. It used but to be, I, mean, I think it was Parker the Parker Brothers, Brothers I think before. That was Parker Brothers, yeah. They um they like the guy. There's a story of the guy like meeting like the Quakers when they were playing this game, and he just stole it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of great. A lot of the things back in the day were just stolen yeah. from America, dog. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the uh, Disney shit was all so stolen, do, tales yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Back in the day, you know. It was easier to steal stuff. It was also easier just to do a lot of crazier shit. Like, people had, like, second families, like, yeah. two blocks away. Because you could do it, and as long as someone in, like, Illinois didn't hear about it, you're in California, you could just get so big to the point where it's like, There's you know, no, it's done now. Yeah. No communication. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. There's people, like... Are they going to write a letter in about it's like It's like local newspapers and, like, local TV mm-hmm. for the most part. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's I not was... Much, not, probably not much national news yet. No TV, really. Well, you think yeah. about, like... It, that was always funny. It was like you watch like cowboy movies and stuff, how they outsmart people. It was just like common sense shit. Yeah. Like, people were so dumb that they'd just be like, no, that's not me. And they're like, all right. Yeah. You could get away by just like running behind a rock. Yeah. yeah. And then coming, <laughs> out, <laughs> coming out like an hour later. Like, Damn, you disappeared. I don't Man know. Man well, many faces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I always thought of like, uh, like imagine the first, um, the first guy. Yeah. Uh, Hella good. Like, you know, detectives, like, I mean, they had that TV show about, I think it was called, like, th- was it The Cut or whatever, or what? Mm. It was basically about, um, it was with Owen, uh, fuck, I can't remember his name is, Clive Owen, and... Uh, the it, Nick. W- the Nick, yeah, yeah, it was, like, medicine in the time of when they were, like, washing your hands was the great, like, yeah. the thing that just fucking, like, yeah, yeah, they yeah. just, fe- like, they're like, why wash your hands, yeah. yeah. So I think about that. It was like imagine like the first detective who was like, "I'm gonna bring a notebook to the scene yeah. of the crime," and they're yeah, like, yeah. "Holy shit, <laughs> this guy's a fucking." Well, Garza genius. always has that joke about how like people can now go back and and uh, use DNA evidence for stuff that they mm-hmm. did back there. But it was like the guy back then who was just like collecting semen from crime <laughs> from crime <laughs> yeah. scenes. People were like, "The fuck is Frank doing? Grinding up semen at every crime scene?" <laughs> it was like, "Yeah, I guess that weirdo kind of helped out everybody." <laughs> yeah, we figured it out. Yeah, the first person to do a chalk outline. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, dude, Steve's a genius. He's a genius. Or a creep. We didn't catch the guy, but, but we know the here. outline. Yeah, we know the outline of his body. <laughs> right there. He did not look comfortable. <laughs> See how his body's all fucked up? Um, all right, yeah, let me know when you're ready. Uh, I'm good. Oh, perfect. Sweet. Um, yeah, I like keeping the beginning in. You know, when you do like two minutes of us just fucking around and then we enjoy. All right, hey, hey, good. welcome to the podcast. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, this is Peaked. My name is Frank Castillo. This is our co-host, JP Noda. <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, it feels good to be here. This is a great episode because we're making up for a time that JP wasn't here and I got way too high and we tried to do two in one day. And that was a mistake. <laughs> uh, today's guest is a good friend of mine, fellow door guy, very funny comic, uh, Stephen Fury. What up? I do yeah. got to say, I thought this was going to be an above waist interview. Mm-hmm. So my bottom half is not matching my <laughs> <current> <laughs> aesthetic. <laughs> that is Apologies. a question they need to ask people yeah. uh, when you go do podcasts. Is this above waist or is yeah. it below waist? Since the pandemic, I've been all above waist. Man, ever since the pandemic, I've just been like short, comfortable. <laughs> I came out of this pandemic realizing comfortable comfortability is key. Yeah, that, it's like, going to be. Sandals, sweats, like shirts that are just kind of loose. I love that shit. It's going to be interesting to see if we, you know, every style, there's a reaction to it. There was like big baggy pants, bell bottoms, and people with skinny jeans. Like maybe we're going to go back into like dudes wearing top hats and monocles because we're all getting so comfortable that the, we, unless, any more comfortable wearing clothes, we'd all just be naked. Oh. So it's like we're going to have to swing back, and I bet monocles are coming back hot in the swing. 30s. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I wonder who was, like, the first dude who was, like, top hats. That's, mm. you know, because one guy probably wore it, and then everyone was like, yep. that guy. I mean, imagine if you're in a room with a bunch of people. Like, you had a job interview, everyone's in sweats, and then one guy in a top hat and a monocle comes in. You're like, I'm not getting this job. Got to yeah, come yeah, back yeah. next time. Yeah, yeah. You're either, <laughs> yeah, men's yeah, warehouse. Yeah. You're either like, oh, that guy's definitely not getting that job, or you're like, that guy's definitely yeah. getting the job. Yeah. He might be the undercover boss. Just like, <laughs> you ever kill it in an interview? Yeah, I've, I'm, 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 I'm tend to do pretty good in interviews, I, I do like. great in job interviews. Yeah. Especially Just, group interviews? Yeah. Murder it. Yeah, I, I do a lot of eye contact. I can turn on like a little charm thing. 
pretty good. Within, when I get the job, it never really ends well. No. I've been fired from most of the jobs. <laughs> yeah. How many how many jobs have you been fired from? Probably three. The worst one, was, I just get too comfortable in all of them. You know, oh, the yeah, first absolutely. one I start, dress shirt, looking nice. Then I start just wearing nothing. I remember I worked for the state. I lived in Sacramento. That's where, like, everyone's employee. It's called California Public Employees Retirement System, CalPERS. So all, like, police and, like, uh, teachers and stuff, this company runs their thing. Their retirement system so i worked there and i just got so comfortable that i <laughs> i told my boss how to work around the firewall so that you could watch illegal movies while you worked <laughs> like i thought <laughs> i thought it would have been cool <laughs> like they would have enjoyed this information that i was bestowing upon them i was like yo you know how no one does their work here because no one works at the state or the government in Sacramento. everyone just finds ways to not work I was like, we can actually watch movies if you do this. And I remember the woman looking at me, and I thought she, I was like, I'm blowing her mind. This is the best day she's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> she probably has, like, Gilmore Girls to, to watch or some shit. But she was just like, what a fucking moron. Oh, my God. fire this guy in t- fucking two days. Yeah, that's the – I well, I would always, like, be really good at my job the first few months to show them that, like, yeah, I'm great at yeah. this. And then I'd be like, all right, now I'm fucking I'm yeah. taking a fucking backseat now. Yeah, bare minimum. T- bare minimum. That's what I sh- switched into. Yeah, yeah. If I'm getting minimum wage, you get bare minimum. <laughs> bare minimum. What do you want? Yeah, bare minimum wage, bare minimum work. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> all right, we should probably introduce all of the great shit we got working today. So we have a new uh, partner of the show. I'm very excited. We got these Hi-Fi Hops from Lagunitas and Absolute Extracts. Yeah, these man, so I good. love these. These are so good. Yeah, it's, two of my favorite companies, you know, Longanitas and Absolute Extracts. Yeah. It's been nice to have, uh, you know, we got a nice little multi, we got a smorgasbord of fucking stuff for us to try on this edible adventure. So we got, you know, I'm drinking this, uh, Absolute Extracts Hi Fi Hops. We also have um, the Punch Edibles 100 milligram chocolate bar. I got some delicious malt bowls. I have some gummies, but also, dude, I think you'll like these. I've got fucking yeah, I've been snacks, seeing you post these. baby. So these are fire. 10 milligram, low dose. Uh, I got, dude, these cheese puffs are amazing. These fucking ranch fucking ones are great. Um, the hint of lime, straight up just, these taste like Doritos no and fucking Cheetos and shit. I just That's don't like, think 10 milligrams is a light dose. Well, I think two milligrams. Like, if I'm eating chips, like t- a 10 milligram chip, you ever eat that really hot ass, like, paquito yeah. trip? That's like hot as fuck. And it's like one chip. Because you eat three of those, you're at 30 milligrams. For a normal human being who doesn't smoke weed, they're going to be dead. For me, at 30, I'll be fine. You want to yeah. try one of these? I'm not a ranch guy. I'll take the cheese one, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, the hot Cheeto ones are like, I would say that hot. Yeah. Where like, I have a sweating after them, for sure. They're really fucking good, though. And um, I think the reason they're in 10 ooh, milligrams is open. it's hard to, to, like, the regulations that have to be, like, in a 10 milligram dose mm. or less. And so I think it's hard to that's be, like, per chip is exactly 0.25. Or, oh, you know? it's per bag. Yeah, exactly. So oh. that's 10 Yeah, it's not 10 milligram a bag. chip. Oh, okay. No, that is perfect. They're yeah. going to come out with 100 milligram bags, but I think 10 milligrams of bag is great. It's a snack. I think about people like my pops and shit. Yeah. You know? yeah. Okay, that's what I was saying. I was like, dude, a thing of these, with each one's 10 milligrams. Who the fuck would want to eat? Oh, they're like... I hate the bag. And then their eyes just start melting. Well, because that's <laughs> happened no, to perfect. you. Yeah. At the store, back door, someone gave you one of those ABX fucking uh, yeah. oil things. And then you're like, you took it. I yeah. ate a whole cookie. Yeah. Oh, it I was, thought it was a capsule. No, it was the fucking, uh, the big ass cookie. I think it might have been the Lowell's. The Lowell's with the, with the cow. No, yeah. it's Corova. It's that's Corova. a Corova. 100 yeah. milligram cookie. Someone just, it was Kim Congdon when I was living in her living room. She, I'm, I was going to do the back door at the comic store. It was a Tuesday night, terrible night back then. I mean, fun, but just not fun because you got to kick out people you don't want to kick out. And I go, I used to take like a small amount of edibles, and I, she goes, just have this cookie. And I ate the full 100 milligram cookie. Lost my fucking mind. I remember walking <laughs> by you when you found out it was 100 milligrams because you were like, 100? I thought it was 10. And then I just <laughs> remember periodically going to the back door and seeing you more and more progressively fucked up until eventually it was just someone new. Yeah, I took <laughs> off my shirt and I left. I was going to go home. <laughs> Not home, home. I was going to go home back to Sacramento <laughs> and go back to that Cal Purse job that I gave that bitch that thing. And then right when I go right to the, right to the fucking uh, parking lot outside of uh, Pink Dot, I was like, no, 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 no. I got to go back. I got to go back. Shirtless walking down half the street. Awful experience. (laughs) All right. Well, I'm totally throwing one of those in your bag next time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Oh, good. First one's good. No marijuana. You could easily drug someone with this. Right? They Mm -hmm. taste exactly like snacks. 
They're fucking dangerous. Which what should I? So I'm gonna do a hundred. Should I do a bar? Or should I do mall bowls? Uh, bar's probably easier to eat. But it's up to you. Which one do you want to eat? Which one tastes better to you? Let's do the toffee milk chocolate. I do love those strawberry mal- malt balls. Those they are do. The insanely good. Are so fucking good. So I, uh, you know when you get like the off-brand edibles and the guy just makes like a loud, like exorbitant amount of THC they say is in it. So I got a few of those ones. Dude said 1,200. Jesus. No. But also like how accurate are those? Yeah, well, it just depends. Like, yeah, off brand. So like, we we had some come into our obsession recently that were um, like definitely uh, traditional market that were uh, like 150 each. That traditional were, market is on the street. Is a traditional That's great. market. I love that. They were uh, 150 each, market. and they were definitely a true 150 each. Oh huh. yeah, yeah. They were like really good, and we got some like 600s too that were like uh, like a single worm that was 600. And oh that yeah, was like Hannah. I told Hannah I was going to do that 600. Put me to fucking sleep. It was wild, bro. I, I was going to do the worm sleep. today. That was when I did the 900 milligrams. Yeah, I was going to do the worm today, and Hannah was like, "No," she was like, "I can't deal with you on 600. You got to chill." She was like, well, "Save it for another day." And I was like, "All right, dude." <laughs> yeah, he gave me this one said 1200. I ate a bite last night. And then I, I mean I slept a very long time, but also if your tolerance is like decent and like even if it's only a hundred something like maybe that's a lot. twenty milligrams is good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh no, I didn't eat the whole thing. I only yeah, had exactly. One bite. But I'm saying like maybe that like one a bite of twenty milligrams yeah. is like perfect. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when you get stoned, it really hits you. I see it. With me? Yeah. When you get high, you're just like, oh. Yeah, I don't really talk. It's not a very. I felt like I was better getting on drugs and uh, getting high when I was a kid. Now I kind of just sink back. I'm not. I definitely used to be able to smoke a blunt and go right on stage, and kind of like living in this like uh, riffing thing that was fun. But now I find it. I'm like, I just like revert back to it's almost like playing a CD of my act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not in the moment whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That thing is when you get too high, you're not in the moment. Uh-huh. And you're like, I just got to. You can get these perfect moves. though, and then it's the magic spot, but you can fuck it up. Yeah, minute. yeah. When you get perfect, you're like, all right, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'm like right in the moment. Smooth. Yeah. Um, well, dude, I remember. Yeah. Like it was one of my favorite moments is when I had a, a dab rig on me at the store, uh, and like I think you guys both signed up for Fallout spots. Um, and and like I pulled it out, and you're like, wait, that's like a dab rig, and I was like, yeah, man, like a real dab, and you're like. All right, sick. And I gave you like a fucking fucking real dab. And then you're like, let me get another one. And then someone came out and was like, hey man, you're on deck. And you're like, what? <laughs> and yeah. like, but like you were like this, like you're like fuck it. And then after you came out and like you were like crying, laughing, and like just a huge smile on your face. And I was like, you good? And he was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you're like, I'm so hard. I hate shit, <laughs> dude. When you when you when you're like up there high as balls and then you realize there's like 180 people staring at you it can get weird in my head yeah it was definitely only like 11 too so like it was still a pretty full, yeah full room yeah. Oh, i miss those Mondays so much <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i remember you used to come with the fucking james bond weird ass little things i remember you had that one tiny little dab rig remember you like put it on a bong it was like so tiny. I was like, "Oh, cool we can't thing. talk about that product yeah, on this yeah. podcast." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was stupid. I hate it anyway. I'm a Puffco guy. Puffco for life. <laughs> it, rhy- and it, rhy- doodles. it rhymes with Schmein pen. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, speaking of dabs, let's go ahead and uh, do this first little taster. What are we working with? Um, well, I, mean, I don't think, or I guess we can get yeah, it. Talk about strain. Round. Yeah, the strain's oh, uh, sorry, it's you know a grapes and cream. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go in the first round. Cool. Round one. That one's really good. What, uh, yeah, what is uh, this? Right, so yeah, the grapes and cream. It's a uh, great pie and, and cookies and cream. Uh, we've smoked this one uh, previously, um, but it's going to be, um, this one, when you smell and taste it, it's a lot of that white grape terpene, kind of off rip. Um, but then because it has that cookies and cream in get, there. Did you just get hotter quicker than mine? Well, that's the uh, atomizer, baby. It's the new atomizer. Oh, the new thing? Yeah, dude, that's the new, um, it's the 3D chamber. It, it rips. And it, like, it saves <laughs> battery life, too, and it gets up uh, the temp factor. Can I put it on mine? Mm-hmm. Definitely could. <laughs> how, much, how much do those run, people? 80 or 90. <coughs> That's not bad. This is like 60. Yeah, and then you get the little bubble cap, too, and like it, the airflow is optimal. It's, it's stellar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with that one, you should really get a lot of that kind of sweet berry grape flavor. Um, but then that cookies and cream, the cookies terps, has that kind of almost nice peppery and then like plant material flavor on that back end and this, is, this, um, <coughs> no, and this one doesn't use anything to extract it is this just the so, yeah, smoking it's hash, the plant it's hash rosin 
Yeah, yeah. So they they wash the hash, and then they once the hash is dry, then they press hash. I forgot to put uh, water in my my. That's funny. So taking fat dry rips. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely brutal, but I feel like sometimes uh, you can get like a really th- like thick, like true flavor to it. Yeah, real headbandy right now. I feel it right on my third eye. Yeah, I'd say a lot of it is that that cookies kind mm-hmm. of that traditional like that Durban poison um, that's in there. Yeah, I like this stuff more than the extract stuff because you can feel the turps of the actual plant in it more than like someone putting some shit in aftermarket. Totally, and yeah, exactly, and that's what a lot of the the why a lot of people are kind of going oh, to fuck. rosin now, which I really dig is. Um, a lot of people like we're doing like lower grade concentrates and reintroducing food grade mm-hmm. terpenes or like steam steam distilled terpenes. So like it would be fine, but it would just taste like wet plant. Yeah. Uh, and I just wasn't a huge fan. Some people do it really great. They they uh, wash uh, the process great material and are able to kind of keep that quality all the way through. And then a lot of people are just kind of trying to make their bottom line. Um, and so the quality of the product can really kind of vary in normal ways and the most consistent. I like the plant taste, but sometimes you can take. I feel like you can tell, taste what was used to extract it yeah totally and that's what i don't like yeah no for me like i said it's that wet i really feel like it tastes like you can tell it it was like steam like someone steamed a plant it's very weird ben i i think what you mean like that pine like og like yeah like that's i love it. that for sure yeah yeah i mean this had it right here yeah so there's that cookies in there that bay area like the old school like girl scout cookies yeah yeah dude i remember when girl scout cookies was coming out it was cherry pie <laughs> And Thin Mints was combined to make Girl Scout cookies. And I remember I was still selling drugs at that time. And it was so hard to find cherry pie. It was like the hardest strain to find in Northern California. Because everyone was trying to do it. Because I think Burner just smoked it with Wiz Khalifa or some shit. Gave him a bag of it. Oh, man. I remember I got one bag of it and sold out. It was A bag for me was like a half pound. Sold out in like two days. Yeah, that's crazy. All on traditional market. Yeah. That, I mean, that good pussy we had. We lit- I had like... Three bags of it. Yeah. And that was it. Oh, was that that dark ass weed you got from that one guy? Yeah. Bro. yeah. Well, that dude, it had hard. the it had the craziest like of like Cushman's terps. Like, so it was like really creamy, but it had that OG as well. Ooh, it smells good. But then it had like some like almost uh, like Skittles sweetness to it as well. Right. It was fire. It was so good. I like this shit because it almost smells like weed menthol. You when know, it's like that refreshing kind of. Did we did we get you into the rosins and concentrates a lot more? Yeah. Once I got this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and he's definitely like really. I feel like anytime someone's like, you know, like yeah, I hit up JP and like he gives me like rosin recommendations. Yeah, that shit always makes me like smile. Oh, I get everything I got from him. Yeah, that's what I think is the best. Well, not weed, weed. But that's what I think is great is that people like you know what I mean? Because he's he's my friend. You know? No, I'm just kidding. He's a weed. Uh, He's a a, a, a weed weed sherpa. He's a weed sherpa fool. Yeah, he ripped that mountain with a little goat and some fucking resin. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh steve uh best taco spot in uh in san jose versus best uh taco spot in sack and what dish wins it? san jose i'm not a huge san jose fan i think this whoa is, i think downtown is dead it's not really much going on it's kind of shady yeah it is now it's weird it kind of seems like it's on the outskirts of the towns are better but uh, sacramento's food seems pretty good their mexican one is not as good. I mean, just what's happening in Southern California is so much better, the food, than anywhere else. Like, the closer you get to Mexico, obviously, the me- the food gets better. But you go from L.A. I, can, I feel like in Northern California, no one's really making tortillas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. no one's yeah. fra- But you go to some fucking abuela on your street corner, and the woman's making tortillas right there on this little cart. And it's like, how do you even compete with that? And then you get to San Diego, and they're making flour tortillas for, like, their normal burrito spots. And then it's like, okay, this is really the game. Because just like, to me, on food, for sandwiches and tacos, to me, it's not really about what's inside of it. Because a lot of, you know, sandwiches, you just put boar's head in it. It's the bread. It's the tortilla and the bread. That's what mm-hmm. sets something apart. Yeah. And so I would go, I would go L.A., option C. <laughs> or San Diego. And you failed. Um, I mean, San Jose, I'm always going to, you know what I mean? It's the a, orange sauce place is cool, but it's also kind of. You know what? La Vix. La Vix burritos are good. Yeah. They're not great. They're famous I don't for think, like their carne asada fries. Yeah. I don't think La Vix is. And then I don't sauce. I only get a lot of shit for this. I don't think La Vix is <laughs> the best burrito spot in San Jose. It's just a vehicle for their sauce. It's a sauce restaurant. It is. It's a hot sauce restaurant. It makes food, and then you eat the food with the hot sauce. I'm going to get stabbed next time I go to San Jose for saying some shit like this. I heard what you said about our sauce. Um, No, the sauce is great. Sauce is great. 
food? I'm, I'll go to Iguanas, get a burrito, and then go Iguana's to Vix yeah. to get the sauce. Yeah, that's the one. It's all local, say, Iguanas. Mm-hmm. And then uh, in L.A., I mean, Sacramento, what's a good burrito? So I don't even... What was that place that we went to when we <clears throat> did the shows? Dirty Tots. I'm... Oh, yeah. Food-wise, I think Sacramento's better. But that was... Uh, that's... um. Oh, the famous Dirty Tots from... Uh... So remember what what were we doing? Right we're, next to the comedy spot, right there downtown. We rode scooters. Yeah, we rode scooters the that whole fucking way. That shit was the best. <laughs> that when they first scooters first came out, you could drive them anywhere. There was no rules, so we we were just flying around. And the oh, I just haven't been to Sacramento so long. So what it is is, is I think it's on Twentieth and H by the uh, comedy store in Lowbrow or comedy spot in Lowbrow. So they got these tots and then they slow cook this beef all day and they put that on it then they put this mac and cheese with the sauce that they make there and then they home make like four different kind of barbecue sauces fire fire and it's open kind of late and they got cheap beers too yeah the beers are fucking nice you get a whole bucket of hams five tall boys for like 10 bucks <sighs> that was a good trip yeah that was fun yeah um just so you guys know uh the edibles and mm. everything has finally hit me yeah, when did you start? Before I got here? Yeah, I took like uh, the one fifty before we got here. Good God! And then I just took this hundred, and then I I hadn't dabbed all day, and I took that dab, and then now I've been sipping this. But now, right now, I was like, oh, I feel it. So you're on like four hundred milligrams almost. Three fifty, two fifty. Yeah. JP says no, less. Less, probably like three hundred minimum. <sighs> Still, what is the Okay, let's see how it goes for you guys. I mean, I'm on 20, which is like 200 for me. That's a Frank 200. Dude. <laughs> like, if I t- I'll take 30 to go to sleep at night. My girl's actually better at edibles than I am. What, what, I mean, we get stoned at the store all the time. Yeah, edibles. Weed and drugs, I can do as much. Yeah. I can smoke. I literally smoke blunts all day long. Yeah. Then I put hash in and shatter in it. So it's like I'm not like, but just edibles themselves. After I took my shirt off and quit a job, I was always like, Maybe I'll go a little bit slower on these things. Do you remember, uh, <laughs> my favorite is, uh, do you remember just being able to, like, because oh. you were there at the store as a door guy when the, the switch, Greatest class of all time. The, you yeah. heard that. And the fucking, the switch happened where it was like, you watched when we were, like, smoking weed out in the back, you know, on shift to, like, it being extremely strict. Yeah, but, you know, this is a thing right now, too, I find. I feel like a couple people were grandfathered into it being... You could do still work, still the old stuff, you know, because I see it now, too, with like the new waitresses. Some of the like no one's all the new class. They don't not allowed to get drunk. But then you see the old guys who've been there a while. They kind of still let them do it. Absolutely. Uh, I was just <laughs> I was in the back talking to, you know, Jen, the manager. Yeah. She's been to my wedding. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love Grew Jen. up. She was like my she's like my second mom or she's one of the many moms I have. Um, <laughs> but top uh, 10 moms. Yeah. Top 10 moms. Um, <laughs> But I remember it was recently we were sitting in the back and, you know, I always have weed. And uh, sometimes uh, people sneak back to enjoy yeah. a fucking. Yeah. All the, they used to be all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, me and the manager sitting there were talking, shooting, you know, catching up and you know, she's smoking. And um, one of the servers comes up and like he's like, oh, thank God. And so he's smoking in front of the boss. And we're talking about like, you know, he's complaining about like what was kind of going on. And they were like talking and then he leaves and she's like, come on. And I'm like, what? She was like, you know. He should be terrified that he's smoking weed in front of me. And I go, oh, yeah. Was he a new guy? Yeah. And oh, then okay, I was yeah, dying should... laughing. I was like, I make people way too comfortable. And I absolutely get people in trouble. Because he, like, walked over. And I was like, you want to smoke weed? And yeah. he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, We probably should... got, thought he got <laughs> brought in the circle. You know? No. Yep. Yeah, no, yep. no. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a test. And you failed, <laughs> new guy. You're out. What did you get you? I fucked it up. That's happened a lot. Uh, it's definitely your fault. Absolutely. <laughs> I remember I, before phones, I was smoking, and it was when they first installed the cameras. And then Eric Anderson comes up to me right before I clock in, and he goes, "Hey, man, it's probably not a good idea to get stoned in front of the cameras before your shift." And I was like, "Oh, so am I like fired?" And he goes, "No, but if I catch you again, I'm fucking. You're gonna get fired." And I was like, "All right, dude." When we used to work phones and just v- fucking vape weed near all- near the end of it, <laughs> yeah, near the end of nonstop it- hotboxing that fucking little room, dude. Near the end, yeah, they really let us get away with so much, especially me. Especially like after we got passed, yeah. All once these we things, got passed, it was like oh, they were just like I, I was smoking weed in the office. We're just- like it disappeared. Well, not weed. We're vaping in a pen or one of these things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like we're like it dissipates. We're like kind of. 
Yeah, and it smells like in extract. It smells good. They smell different. Yeah, it's not like you're like, oh, you smell kind of weedish. Yeah, it could be like a Christmas smell. And a lot of know? these sweeter, like, yeah, the extracts and stuff, it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? So oh, should I clean dude, this out or is that enough have, for one more actually hit? I actually have the fucking best story. So uh, we did Thanksgiving at my parents' house this here. year. Uh, and I'm sitting here, next to my here. grandpa and my grandma and then, like, my girlfriend and everyone. And, like, we're at this long table with probably 15 of us. Um, I bring the Puffco out in the middle of dinner. And I'm sitting at the end, and I, I turn the light off, but I'm hitting it. And I hit it, and I blow it out. It's a pen, though. No, not no, the, the Puffco. Ring. The whole Puffco. Out of dinner. And my grandma goes, oh, my God, there's a skunk outside. <laughs> she didn't see you. She didn't she, you, and she's sitting like three sheets away from me. And I just started dying laughing. And my like, my everyone in my family just got. Did it, does everyone else smoke weed? They're all like cool with it. Yeah, I mean they all kind of get used to it. They're like, yeah, I mean, I kind of forced that upon them. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. I did in both my life. Like that like, one, you know, you're, I'm normalizing this, and then always like definitely you can see it makes them uncomfortable. But it's like, yeah, it's like I don't really care. You love me, don't you? Yeah, it's either you're gonna you're either gonna dislike me because I smoke weed and have a good time, yeah, or you're gonna like me because I'm a good person, and yeah. I do nice things for people, and I'm not a bad guy. It's, it's hard. Like, it, hey, I drove all the way up. Yeah, there. It's, all, yeah. it's also so hard with family too. Cause I mean, like, I don't know at the table, hey, man. but okay. yeah, I, I did on it. I'd have fucking yeah, I'd been the same thing hit at the table because it's also like I've had ants and I love them. I love my family, but I've had ants come up to me and be like, I wish you wouldn't smoke so much weed and be like, well, you know what? I wish uh, your kid didn't do hardcore drugs. We all <laughs> fucking <laughs> we, and no offense to my cousin. You know what I mean? I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but also like, you know, if he started a podcast uh, about doing age. Yeah, about it'd be pills. great. <laughs> welcome to the uh, Today's sponsored by. <laughs> MS-13. Um, <laughs> Frank, which horror movie would be scary if you replaced the uh, the main killer with Michael Jackson? Ooh. Um, uh, Home Alone. <laughs> it's a horror movie, but that's good. <laughs> well, it just became a horror movie if you were the kid. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, or three? Ooh. One's terrifying because it's in one spot, but I think two would be even scarier because you're like Alone in New in York and he's fucking following you like the, yeah, like the pigeon lady. Michael Jackson, the pigeon lady yeah. fighting it out. <laughs> that pigeon lady was kind of hot. Frank. Oh, is that just me? Yeah. Pigeon lady was kind of, yeah, it's probably yeah, just it's you, dog. Just you, Frank. <laughs> Maybe her like deceased husband. That caused this mental illness that she sits in a park. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another movie. I don't know. Maybe like one that was like was a little kid, like Chucky. If like Chucky was Michael Jackson, I don't know. That wouldn't be that good, I guess. Maybe like Orphan or like uh, Annabelle. Uh, orphan, yeah. Orphan's a... Uh, he plays the little doll. Yeah, he's like he the little the... doll. It's like a little Michael Jackson doll. Be Orphan would be like Michael Jackson's horror <laughs> movie because then he catches like a child and then finds out it's really a 38-year-old <laughs> adult. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no! I fucked a, a person of age. <laughs> Was that too much? Anya. No, I'm fine with it. Anya! Anya! <laughs> We've so we've been playing uh, Vanguard, uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we're saying about these fucking kids are the worst. Yeah, it really feels like two thousand. Because dude, it's I'm right back in high school. It's crazy. And I think that's what's attributed to why the world is the way it is, is because we Call had of Duty Call lobbies. of Duty <laughs> lobbies growing up. Yeah, we're all thank we all need to thank God that they don't record those. Because then we would never have another president again. Well, bro, half these people are on Twitch now. So, like, a lot of them are being recorded. Yeah. You know, it's fucking crazy. And people will find it if they need to one day. Oh, for sure. For sure. You remember when you were 12 and you called uh, this dude the, the, the N-word multiple times for no reason? <laughs> dude, I mean, if they were to record what we called our my friends and I, I would have been uh, deleted. But... I think about that all the time. I had a friend who called me his dirty Mexican friend uh, all of high school. He also called me a wetback all the time. But I... I, I knew this kid. Like, he slept yeah. in my house. He's like, you know, my mom loves him. I love him. He's just... And then we found out much later that his real grandfather wasn't his real grandfather, and his real grandfather was Mexican. <laughs> and then we... So his real last name was something super Hispanic, and then we're just like, yeah, you fucking wetback. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's bad, bitches. <laughs> yeah, you fucking dirty wetback. You know what I mean? You, yeah. But it that's just kind of how, you know, we were. We're yeah, me and my friends used to call each other the F word constantly. 
throughout every conversation I've ever had in my life. When we were kids, 13, I remember in first grade, me and my friends said, you had to cuss at least once every sentence when we hung out. So we would that's just, hilarious. I swear that's to God, great. that's it. We were in the club and we, we were all like, how do we get cooler? And we we're like, I think it's cussing. So we, to, <laughs> so we got like a cuss one time every since. So we would be like, this fucking pool was pretty nice today. How have you been? And it was just like this whole thing. Oh, it was fucking hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fucking hot. These fucking cookies are delicious. And we would just go for it. And then it just went from there into, we hung out. I went to like a K through eighth grade. So we were together there. So at the end, it was like just cussing nonstop. Yeah. I remember uh, after I graduated high school, I ran into my friends after I mean, like three, four years. It's been a while. And it was like the th- two guys I hung out with every day in high school. And I got to meet his girlfriend for the first time. And his girlfriend was like extremely liberal, like super progressive, super PC. And like the Cosby thing had just happened. So we were like cra- sitting there just making jokes, cracking jokes. And she was like every time, like just it just couldn't handle. It. And I remember she was like. They eventually broke up, but later my friend was telling me, he was like, yeah, she didn't like any of you guys. She especially didn't like you and your comedy. I was like, really? She's like, yeah, she said you were really, really offensive and blah, blah, And it made me laugh because this woman grew up in Temecula from yeah. a very protected suburb. And I was just like, yeah, like I'm from yeah. fucking e- like the Bay Area. Like you've never. So yeah. it, was just, it was very funny to be like, yeah, you're you're an idiot. Yeah, you've never seen this just part of society because yeah, yeah, you've yeah. been in this little level. But there's people who live like this. It's just the way that we talk. And there's yeah, no yeah. It was, it. yeah. It's just making jokes against people. Absolutely. I have like one of my best friends who I'm pretty sure like I haven't seen in a couple of years because his girlfriend just does not like the shit I say. <laughs> 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 but it's because it makes me laugh. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've had, uh, yeah, I've had people just kind of like, they'd be like nah and I'm like really I'm that's like, great dude what, what are you talking, talking about? about that was hilarious it was great yeah <sighs> Frank do you think your uh, your childhood self you would your be test results <laughs> no I was supposed to get this money from somebody yeah try to get this goddamn money America goddamn uh-huh. delaying saying I didn't fucking invoice them um so I did I've invo- well, are we gonna smoke this thing or what yeah did yeah, you hit it was, oh I don't know if we keep it, doing the communal no, thing no no it's, it's, it's still the first it's still time. the first Okay. Yeah, I'm, still yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, still yeah, I'm trying to push this thing to the motherfucking limit, dude. I cleared out my schedule today. Yeah. <laughs> you want to take another, those, those you wanna take another edible? You, bro? Um, no, take some 10, 10 milligram bag? I'll take it's one of those strawberry milligram. things you guys are talking about. Fire. They're so good. I don't need the whole one. I can just have one. I think they're 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah 10, 10 each. 10, right? yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Frank, do you think your uh, childhood self would be uh, disappointed when you ate for dinner last night? What did I eat for dinner last oh, night? Some incredible shit. Is it fucked up that I remember what you ate for dinner last night and you don't? <laughs> no, I just think that's friendship. What did what did uh, what did I eat for dinner last night, JP? A burrito. Oh yeah, I had a burrito. Um, yes, I think, I think I would be disappointed because, listen, I don't know if you could tell by, the way I reacted. My wife was like, "Let's get pink taco." I was like, "All right." <laughs> Pink tacos, Mexican food doesn't feel like no. It's not very good. It's, it's like, not it's good like, Mexican. It's like, it's like Vegas Mexican food. Yeah, yeah it, like it feels yeah. Pink taco feels like it's supposed to be on the Sunset Strip. Yeah, like that's, that's where it yeah, but Ponchos is right there. Exactly. Go to you know what I mean? Pinches taco. Pinches. Yeah, pinches. You know what I mean? Yeah, pinches, pinches, you know yeah. mean? Like tacos al gav. I love this. Is, I love my wife, but I think our versions of Mexican food are totally two. Well, different did you versions. go there to eat or did you get it delivered? Delivered. Well, that's nonsense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's maybe the worst Mexican food around to here. To get delivered? Yeah, Just yeah. In, in in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It might be the Mex- worst Mexican food. Yeah, yeah. It, it's weird. It's like, <laughs> no, I feel like I'm just shitting on my wife's food choice and she has no idea. <laughs> That's okay. That's it's like it's like being with a real Italian person and I just called, it's like me saying I'm a real Mexican. Uh, it's like being with like an authentic Italian person and being like, you want pizza? It's like, yeah, let's go to Domino's. Damn, I had something I wanted to say. Um, damn, I lost it. Yeah, I would agree on that one. I mean, that food, food's terrible. There's some. There's a couple good places around here. There's some good trucks I would go to. Have you been to this place across the street? I threw up there one time. I think you told me that, and I yeah. asked you because you were like, "That was the one I threw up at." And then I was like, "I'm never going there." I was yet, super. Yeah. Uh, was it from the was this your hungover? fault? No, no, it was my fault. Oh, okay. I was super hungover. This was. I did a show here with this guy named Richie Doyle. Had a show here. I came and did it, but I was super hungover. 
I hadn't eaten all day, and it was during COVID, so like I didn't look good. People are like, "You've been throwing up, and you look like shit." And I walk out there to go. I'm like, "I'm gonna go get a burrito here." And as I'm standing in line with everyone, I throw up in front of everybody. And then I go, oh, my bad. And I start watching. And then I was like, no, nah, I'm too embarrassed. And I just ran away. Did <laughs> you away. run away? Yeah, I just like, ah, I just like freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> I just hang out like seven people. I just puked in front of them and be like, yeah, sorry. I'm not going to clean that up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess that's just there now. <laughs> and people are just staring at you like. <laughs> just blowing their fucking minds. You good? Yeah. yeah. I was like, look, I stepped away. I was like, ah. ah, ah. Last time I threw. Zarape is where you got to go. El Zarape is fire. Oh, okay. I got food poisoning at the airport and I was on the bus to, to go to like where we were, where we were like parked. And I remember I was on the bus and the guys uh, staring at me and I'm looking at the driver and I go, pull over. And he goes, what? And I go, pull over. <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, you're going to throw up. And I go, yep. <laughs> and he goes, all right, man. He just opens the door. I jump out and he leaves. And I was like, that's fine. I'm like, I'll figure it out. And then I just yanked <laughs> fucking terminal three. The people are getting ready, hugging, leaving to fucking <laughs> visit family or whatever. And there's just a kid puking. This dude, is the worst, I remember dude. me and my buddy, we were like 16, me and my buddy David Kunisaki, and we we're taking a bunch of ecstasy, and we we're going to drive to S- San Francisco. <laughs> and we're, we popped the most all the Bay pills. Bay Area thing I've ever heard. We popped all, and these are the old school pills, like ecstasy pills. The like press. they used to have, the like, press yeah, press said. pills. So we we're like, we thought, we thought, <laughs> so it'd take a little while to kick in. You know, <laughs> years. We were like, if we do. take them now, they'll hit by the time we get to San Francisco. It's like an hour and a half to get there, right? <laughs> and then and then there's traffic, so it took like a two and a half hour. So we took three doubles. And five we, minutes in. Yeah, five <laughs> minutes in, and we get to like Fairfield just gacked out of my mind. <laughs> dancing hella hard. And then my buddy, like we're just like dancing, listening to rap, because he has a small 12, and he put it in his back seat. He didn't even put it in his trunk. So we're just like, and then he just opens the door. We're going 80 and just goes. And then we just kept going. Was like, that was fucking tight, dude. I remember uh, my dad. Uh, so, you know, my dad's Fuck. a big drinker. Not as much as more, but when he was in his heyday. I remember I came down, and his, like, bonding thing was, like, we're going to go out drinking. Yeah. Classic, My you know. <laughs> so we, we're we in San Jose. We wake up early. Or the night before, he took me and my boy Andrew drinking. We drink. He's all His whole thing is Jaeger bombs and uh, fireballs. Uh, or angry angry balls. Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's angry, angry orchard, orchard and fireball, fireball mixed together. It's fucking it's good. I mean, it's dangerous. Sweet, dude. sweet, though. But it's I don't so it. dangerous. So I just remember... Puking the night before, waking up so fucking hungover. We go to catch the train from San Jose to San Francisco. We stop at a bar across the train station. I puke in front of there. We get on the train. I'm hurting the whole ride up. We get off the train. Wait, you took a train from San Francisco? No, San Jose to San Francisco. Yeah, that's a long-ass train. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, there's that pins, right? Pims? Yeah. Or the Lucky Strike or some shit? Yeah. Right in front of uh, the Giants Stadium. Yeah, let's yeah. look straight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we go there. He's like, "You get some hair of the dog. We'll get you, uh, you know, a Bloody Mary." So they'll make me a Bloody Mary. We're sitting there. They had just opened. It's me and him and this lady. I take a sip of the Bloody Mary. The second it touches my lips, I puke in my mouth. Yeah, it's disgusting. And then I like get up and I walk outside and I just immediately start throwing up in the street. Street and it's a busy. It's front. It's the fucking busy street right in front of Giant Stadium. I'm puking. Red it's stuff. It's a fucking wall of windows. So my dad and the bartender can see me walk out puking. And then I walk back in and I go, where's the drink? And my dad goes, yeah, man, they kind of took it away. And they go, yeah, they kind of won't let you drink if you're puking in front of the restaurant. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so what I'm out puking my dad uh, is waiting for me, and he sees. I can't remember if it's like either one of the owners of the Giants eating or like oh, a very important player or something. And he said he walks up and he like introduces himself, and as he's talking to the guy, the bartender's like, "Hey, can you have your son not throw up in front of the restaurant?" And he goes, "What?" And he turns around, and they're all watching me puke <laughs> again. And, yeah, <laughs> again in front of the restaurant, and my dad's like, "We gotta go." <laughs> Of all the stuff that goes down on that street, like homeless people and stuff, for you to get kicked out, that's impressive, you know? Yeah. This guy's peeing, pooping, living there. It's like, I'm puking. There's a dude dying of a heroin overdose right here, and you worried about me? They're like, yeah, but he's right. going to tip, though. Yeah. He's gonna... 
Dude, I have an argument to Fair. say that Bloody Marys are fucking gross. Yes. I think everything oh. put inside of one is gross. Starts with a base of tomato juice. Foul. <laughs> then you put in <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. Gross. Then you put in horseradish sauce. Weird. Then you put in pickled onions. What the fuck is going on? And it's like... people. And then it's cold. If anything, that thing should be eaten... Like warm, a, like a soup. Like a, it's yeah. a fucking soup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me like a hot vodka soup. Yeah, it's disgusting. And then people are like, "No, nah, it's good." I put a hamburger. You ever see like put, someone puts like a hamburger on top? It's always like what? bacon. It's bro. always bacon or some it's shit. In it. It's like sure. you've had. To, it's just so much things to just. It's all accoutrement that you're just drinking breakfast, dog. Too, you're drinking breakfast. Yeah. You're drinking dinner. Let it's disgusting. And then you put in vodka, the grossest of the alcohols. Hey man, take that back. Yeah, you're a vodka guy. Close friend. Ugh. Oh. I've been drinking this Japanese vodka, Haku. <laughs> Japanese people are getting it's in a lot of nice. alcohol. It's good as <coughs> fuck, bro. They started with beer and sake, and now they're in whiskey. And apparently, every time a Japanese person gets into a liquor, everyone's like, that's the new best liquor you can have. <laughs> it's so good. Well, though, I mean, bro. I don't know how to break it. Japanese data, tequila? But Japanese people, yeah, I mean, I think they do. Japanese right, people, tequila. Japanese people, when they tackle something that's not theirs, they fucking <laughs> full on. A hundred percent in it. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. They're, when I went to Japan. I love Japanese people. No, when, when I went to, well, because they care about the shit they do. They're not yeah, like okay. fucking Americans. No, um, when I went to Japan, there was a dude, I went to a Thai restaurant, Thai food restaurant, and I was like, we ate it, best Thai food I've ever had. And I Where? Remember, Here? No, in Japan. Well, and I remember yeah, being I there it. and asking Damn. the guy who was showing me around, I was like, is this guy like from Thailand? And he goes, nope. And I go, what do you, what? I was like, how's he cook the food so good? He's like, he just went and learned. Yeah. He was like, so like, yeah, he was like, over there, Japanese people, they fucking, they don't know. It. They'll just go and like be the best at it. Yeah. Japanese people are cool. Uh, <laughs> I have no problem with Japanese people. I'm pretty high right now. Uh, yeah, man. Japanese people are cool. <laughs> that's the clip. <laughs> and that's the end of round one. <laughs> uh, you want to pass that to me? I'll go in. Uh, the Puff Cope. Is it only one hit each one? One yeah one 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 no, uh, no, no. one dab each one but you can hit it oh, as much yeah, as you no, want yeah no you can hit it as much as you want but I'm I'm just gonna reload you for the second one for yeah, sure. yeah I meant that you want another uh, beer uh, what am I at like thirty right now I'm probably okay. I got a CBD one okay I'll take a CBD one I'm easily talked into this one I'm sipping on yeah this one's a- I do I do I'll do anything if someone just asks twice. <laughs> Like, I'll go anywhere, I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do whatever you want. I don't like saying no, and I don't, uh, I just always say yes. You know? It's like, all right, let's see what's going to go. What's if the, I can, I'll go do it. What are some of the weirder situations that's gotten you into? Selling drugs when I was a kid was real, a bunch of one. I'm I'd sure get some real weird, weird ones. Shit. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I would just be like, my buddy would be like, hey, you want to drive me here? And I'm like, for how much? I'm like, sure. And then, like, he would end up. This dude passed away. I can, I'll tell one story about him. His name was, let's call him his nickname, The Box. He was like the 6'8 black dude. And uh, I used to buy shit off him. He'd get it fronted to me. And uh, so, like, we had a relationship. You know, I did it for, I worked with him probably like eight years. And, uh, dude, I remember he was like, yo, drive me up here. It was, there was a time when, like, cannabis clubs were just buying anything off the street just yeah, to yeah. sell weed. So we would go up to, like, uh, Orville or like uh, the Emerald Triangle and go buy outdoor weed, go down, flip it for like 200, 300 bucks more a pound with 10 packs, you know, working like three grand a day. Yeah. So we go up to go to this little weird house, kind of like by Nevada Union. And we get up there. It's, all, it's like a, three trailers. And then we go in there to buy some weed off these guys. They're all like these short, like brothers. Like not like black guys, brothers, like actual human brain brothers. And, uh, I don't know where my keys went. Oh, shit. And then... Uh, you don't know where your keys went? <laughs> no, went. Oh, they're right there. <laughs> they're right. on the side of you. <laughs> I mean, I'm fucking high cold, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let's, let's open the drinks and then we can finish this story. Okay, so then there were five brothers, right? They all lived on this thing. This, they, they sold weed. And then we go to have... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would have said that too, probably, you know, um, if it was the other way. And we get up there and they're like, hey, man, we, he buys a 10 pack, a 10 pounds of weed. And then uh, he we, he goes, hey, why don't we have a party tonight? And we go, okay, we'll have a party. 
and then we ha- we have a party and a bunch of like country kids with dirty ass feet. It's so, like in the ma- <laughs> in the ma- in the mountains of California they got red clay. So if you go outside with your shoes off, your shit will get dirty and it will get dyed. That's why the I used, I used to people from Chico had Chico feet because they're filled. Chico were always, feet. Because they're always <laughs> filled. Be like like girls would wear like flip flops and the shit would be all dirty. It was like Chico, Chico feet. So we get up to these mountains. They're having a party and then Chad's hitting on one guy's girlfriend. And then they try to jump Chad. And then this dude, he's 6'8". He's a 6'8 brother. This 6'8 brother beats up these five brothers. <laughs> beats the shit out of this whole family, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the most spectacular things. It was just like, because <clears throat> he was 6'8", and they were like 5'5". Five, five. So it's like, it'd be like you when, you, when you think in your head, you're like, what would it be? How many eight-year-olds do you think you could beat up? <laughs> He kind of had that because he was six eight. He was like thirteen inches taller than they were, or more. Some I can't do the math. Yeah, thirteen inches taller than them. <laughs> Way more six and eight to five five. Yeah. Isn't that thirteen inches? Uh, twelve. Six eight, right? Yeah. Five five plus twelve is six five. So three months and a half, fifteen. So he's fifty. Yeah. So it'd be like me beating up on someone who's three feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> so he was just beating the shit out of his family. <laughs> It was their fault though, because they tried to jump him. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so that was, I mean, that. That's yeah, yeah, hilarious. it was like it was like, and he was like big too, not like, but he's kind of fat. He always wore black sweatsuits, not like the cool ones, like the pro T. You know, those like ones you get at yeah. like the uh, liquor station or liquor stores, gas stations. The black on black sweats with the big pockets right here. Miss that guy. He went in for stomach surgery and died just because they fucked up his surgery. Oh, damn, it's fucking. He was getting a good dream. He's a cool guy. Terrible. I take this dab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally spaced out. Yeah, I'm high as fuck, man. <laughs> this thing gets Friend. edited, right? <laughs> Sorry, was someone talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Time for round two, sucker fish. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, what are we smoking on? <laughs> round two. This round's going to be the uh, the orange daiquiri gelato. Uh, orange daiquiri is a combo of uh, orange cookies and grape pie, and then that's with a gelato 33. Uh, it's going to be a strong kind of a citrus classic orange herbs you'd get, um, but they're going to be super almost candied because of the uh, the grape pie uh, that's going to be in that orange daiquiri, but also the Gelato 33. Uh, the 33 is the creamier, sweeter of the Gelatos, where the 41 has that kind of like popcorn right. kernel buttery funk to it. I mean, it's spectacular. Yeah. The, the fruit, the orange is really big. But it's, it, it's not like that kind of like strong orange funk you'd get. It's a lot sweeter than most traditional tangies or like even mimosas. <coughs> <coughs> That's and the smoke is like a little kind of like thick and creamy from that gelato. <coughs> you can see it. <coughs> I like something with a good exhale. <laughs> yeah I like Yeah I like uh, The taste always great But I like being able to exhale And just see those like Clouds <laughs> Yeah <coughs> Visually it just looks dope I like being able to like Make my whole apartment Look fucking just Hazy <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Alright here's a quick Would you like Taste or smell more Taste Taste Cause you can find something That smells great But then just tastes terrible And you're like Ugh. That's true Yeah taste for sure Mm-hmm. That's how like I buy my own weed usually is based on like taste and smell like because it's like I, I'm like usually so high anyway that I don't really care about percentage and be smoking yeah just an regardless insane amount of so it's like might yeah. as well have something you enjoy smoking yeah I'm pretty much always purple unless the shit looks really cool it's like if you can look if green could look so cool it looks better than purple fine <laughs> but I feel most of the time purple is a lot cooler than fucking green is. Cause then, cause this shit bounces way more off purple. If it's like, if it's like a, it's got like a, it's like if you get your your black car dirty, you know, things look more pronounced because it's got a backdrop. So you see crystals more, you see the hairs more, you see everything more. And I'm like, and plus, you throw purple shit down on the fucking table. I used to know, I used to know if I got a bag, like a, if I got a pound of purple, I knew I could sell out because any party I go to, if you fucking throw down a bag of purple weed, there's still some people. Who haven't seen purple weed that much, especially back when I was selling weed, there was no, it was hard to get purple weed. That was like a, it was like a thing that you got. You're like, oh, this guy's got purples. So then you would throw that weed down. You could sell that shit out in a second because everyone would be like, I want to show my friends I got a purple weed from some magic guy at a party. 
Totally. No, yeah. no, now it's like really hard to sell like green weed in the market. Like it's why yeah. gelato is so prominent. Yeah. Um, mostly one because of the potency and the yield of it yeah. too. Uh, and it smells and tastes great. That's why it's pretty much like in everything now. Yeah, it's weirder. There's so there's like it seems like there's like no strands anymore. Back in a kid, you'd be like, you'd really get a different strand all the time, and the shit looked different. You could have like lamb's breath, or like I remember when uh the f- the hot one was uh damn I forgot the name. Oh, it was so hot. Ah, oh, I can't remember. Whatever. God, we're like, you're so, we're I can tell we're all fucking Baked. wrecked right yeah, now. I am. I'm pretty stoned. <laughs> I love it. I'm getting there. I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> oh, right. Steve, uh, what Hollywood superstar would you want to uh, raise your children if you tragically passed away? <coughs> wow, interesting. It's not favorite. <coughs> It'd probably be the best. Oprah. Boom. I don't know. Does Oprah have kids? Because you never learn about Oprah's kids. I don't know what they look like. But I know what Magic Johnson's kids look like. I know what a lot of people's kids look like. I've never seen Oprah's kids. Does she have kids with salmon? You know, I don't know. Because if she doesn't, then no, she could be a fucking psychopath. It would be kind of fun. Who's like a super, do you think, loving person? <laughs> I feel like Keanu Reeves would be great oh. at raising your kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. That's a perfect answer. <laughs> Like kid can shoot and shit. Well, one, you know for a fact that you can defend them, right? Yeah. But every story you hear about Keanu Reeves just being a person is always just being hit. Like, you know, he's the nicest guy, you know? Yeah. I feel like he would, like, Keanu Reeves, will you be the godfather to my unborn children? Yeah. (laughs) That's funny. That'd be funny. My wife would hate it. Yeah. Keanu Reeves? She's not like Keanu Reeves. Just, she likes him as a person, does not like his acting. What the fuck? I know! Yeah, I would say she's wrong. Every guy I've told this to has been like, what the fuck's wrong with her? You know what I mean? <laughs> he just got to play, right? Like, you can't play, like, Jesus Christ or something. There's a thing he has to play. I mean, he was dope as Neo. Yeah, even he was great as a vampire, dude. I love oh, his yeah. interview with a vampire. I mean? Interview with a vampire was great. She just, she thinks he's one note. And I'm like, I love his range. Wait, Keanu Reeves wasn't in an interview no, with a vampire? No, Dr- I'm thinking of Dracula. Dracula, yeah, yeah. She... Bram Stoker's Dracula. So she thinks that. that that is his worst movie. What? Bram Stoker's Dracula. I mean, I could see I mean, that. He's just Ted the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fucking Bill and Ted are his worst movies. Those are fucking stupid. I mean, those you're not watching those fantastic. to see <laughs> yeah. the great acting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Just you're wa- for bits. Yeah, you're watching just that. Wa- yeah. It's like History, I'm not. History, yeah. comedy. <laughs> Put it together. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing my mind. <laughs> I haven't seen this shit in a long time. Yeah. I haven't seen the last one yet. Well, guess what? There's a third one now. So. Yo, you remember when... Uh, did you guys have Blockbusters where you're from? Yeah, you're all California. Absolutely. Okay. Do you remember when they came out with the Unlimited <laughs> Pass? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. That shit was so... T- that's when I saw the most movies. Because my buddy... Because we when you got that Unlimited Pass, it was like... You said every movie you could ever watch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You get like three at a time. You remember when they let we you... go like four times a day. You remember when they let you <laughs> rent systems? Yeah, I remember that. Fucking like party <clears throat> or something. And I have to be like, hey, Dad, can I rent this Xbox? He'd be like, we're fucking poor as shit. No. Uh, uh, you want to eat this week? Uh, uh. Actually, yeah, my dad was always hooking me up with one. I also say that. There was one that when he got me an Xbox, he the day I got my first Xbox, I got an Xbox and a printer. And I was like, do they come together? He goes, yep. (laughs) (laughs) He goes, they sell them. It's a bundle. And I was like, this motherfucker got it off the back of a truck or some shit. But yeah, no, I got the Xbox. Yeah. Are you playing Halo, dog? I was. I played Halo. (laughs) Oh. I'm stoned, bro. Yeah, I'm fucking high as shit. My dad always. So my dad worked at. uh, my dad's worked at like a grocery store all his, not all his life. He used to be a mechanic and stuff, but he like got into the grocery store. He's got good health shirts, like union and all that shit. But I remember uh, during the Harry Potter craze, grocery stores would sell the new books when they would oh, yeah. come out, right? Yeah, those things were hard to get, those books. Yeah. So I remember I was like trying to find a way to pre order all this thing. You had to wait in line at the game or the board or something. I think it was like the <coughs> they do the midnight sixth releases, or dude. seventh book. Yeah. Uh, it was like the sixth, seventh book. And then I remember um, it was like the night before I was sleeping and my dad got off work. And I remember being asleep and something hitting me 
And I remember waking up, and then I look, and it was the new book. Oh, nice. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, how'd you get this? He was like, I just walked up to the back and took it off the pallet. And I go, really? <laughs> he goes, yeah. I'm like, they, like, these are under lock and key at every yeah. Barnes & Noble. And he goes, yeah, man, I just asked <laughs> fucking Dave if I could just buy it now. And he was like, sure. <laughs> well, it's yeah. awesome. It's kind of how I got my first Playboy. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, my dad, my dad fucking literally threw it on my, my, ta- my table. When I like went to take a shower and I came back and like I was like, huh? Whoa! Uh, <laughs> this is a blessing you're saying. Like here's something to jerk off to, bud. <laughs> Oof, it was fun. like a fucking. Uh, well, little did I know that he actually like his dad used to collect them and then oh. he also like had a bunch of the, from like the 80s and shit and so like he was just passing it on. I guess that would suck for like Playboy to have been your only way to jerk off like just titties. <sighs> Thank All God you for you got titties for smartphones, uh, dude. Yeah, smartphones, dude. <laughs> Thank God for the internet. Yeah, it's, it's bad. <laughs> Frank, you're in charge of making the uh, next big theme park kind of like Disneyland. Uh, what theme are you choosing, and who's your mascot? Ooh. Um, I'm going to go different. I'm not going to create my own. I'm going to go with an already existing IP, and it would be a theme park. <coughs> They kind of already have a Simpsons theme park. Uh, I would love a fucking uh, Rick and Morty theme park. Like if they did oh, the yeah. whole like Disneyland level theme park, but for Rick and Morty. All the rides, all the ridiculous shit, the the drinks. Like, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I feel like the food or drink ideas would be kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so did HBO Max buy Rick and Morty? I think they have a deal with Cartoon Network. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like they're doing like shit through that way. A lot of what's just hilarious. Which is why, because they're working on that's like the whole movie tease, right? Yeah. With through HBO Max or whatever. Yeah, some shit like that. So with the streamings, a lot of like the streaming services, it's so they're just doing direct deals with like networks now. So it's like Hulu and Nickelodeon. Yeah. And like weird shit like that. Which is fucking hysterical because it's like these streaming apps are now becoming their own networks. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's TV's crazy. the Nine network bro. inside of a network. It's yeah. networks inside of a network. Yeah. It's, str- it's the inception of that. Uh, how much time do we have? Perfect. Oh, right, for sure. We'll end around there, then do the last flavor. Sweet. Last I'll, flavor. I'll load you up. And then uh, in the meantime, do you have anything you want to plug? Yeah. That was fucking quick. Right? I was fucking balls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check out my podcast. It's called World on Drugs with Steve Fury. I do a 12-page deep dive into a criminal Drug dealer, psychopath you've never heard of. I'm not talking about motherfucking Pablo Escobar. I'm not talking about Griselda Blanco. I'm talking about Daywood Imbraham Kaskar. This motherfucker started as a street kid in Mumbai, India. Street kids are like what Mobley in the fucking Jungle Book would be. And the man worked his way up. He started the gang at 15. By 18, he took over the city of Mumbai. That'd be like taking over fucking New York. Then he starts bringing in these electronics. And he starts switching the electronics for gold and he starts switching them for guns and starts hooking up with isis and then he accidentally bombs a church then he has to go out to afghanistan and now he's like one of the guys who funds al-qaeda it's crazy and you can call Make him you move, can call dog. him he has a phone number sometimes he answers that's kind of that's crazy and you can't touch him they we all know where he is he's in afghanistan he's a sick man he's just untouchable yeah. oh he's untouchable, he's untouchable? that's hilarious yeah, he's a billionaire that's kind of sick it's tight check it out and you can call him yeah, with the one, well, they called him on a couple times. His wife answered like it's a house phone. Like, hello, <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> this guy's crazy. What, he does human trafficking and everything. He's really crazy. <laughs> he's the him. fucking Gary Vandachuk of just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's not giving a fuck. He's Mike Jones of. He's doing like Man. thirty second videos online. How to like traffic <laughs> people? How to traffic people. Uh, and then and you, I got guess. Yeah, yeah. And then you got dates coming up too, right? Yeah, I will. How soon does this come out? Uh, we're probably gonna drop it this week. Friday. Okay, I will be in Texas with Burke Kreischer all week, and then New Orleans after that, and then Sacramento, and then Reading, and then um, Anaheim. So check those dates out at Bert 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 dot com or at where me at Scuba Ski Fury. Follow me instead. You you, uh, you trying to go to New York? Nice balls. Me, I would go to New York. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah, maybe we'll, we we definitely got to do like a a little uh, trip or some shit. Be sick. Yeah, I could probably get people out in Cleveland now. I got a bunch of new Cleveland followers. Shout out to Cleveland. All right, I did that. I did a fucking arena with them. Was it sick? 
Yeah, yeah, it was sick, man. You know what the best thing is, and this is what I'll say, is it. I, I do very. I tend to do pretty well, and so uh, crushing is. You can, it kind of is just like a, not just not crushing, doing well in a big arena. You can hear it, but it kind of all sounds the same. There's still a little murmur, but when you're in between telling the jokes, and you can hear it silent, like you have the attention. That's the that's coolest <laughs> fucking thing I have ever felt. In my life, because when it's loud, it's loud. It's like ah, ah, ah and then murmurs. But then when when no one's yelling out anything, or because when the silence you hear in a comedy club, that's the thing you have to get used to. Is you're like, yeah. oh, they're all paying attention to me. But that on an arena level, thousands you're like, people, holy tens shit, tens of thousands yeah, of dude. people, bro. That's cool. It's just like, like, <laughs> like right. the, I think we got time for one last right. question. Final round, dog. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. This is uh, this last time we're smoking that strawberry Sunday. It's uh, Straw Nana and uh, Sunday Driver. Uh, the, uh, the Sunday Driver's Fruity Pebbles OG and Great Pie. Uh, it's going to be all that kind of like creamy strawberry banana up front, almost a nice sweeter berry flavor. Um, and then, uh, once again, Great Pie is going to come back and make an appearance um, and kind of really carry it through with a lot more uh, kind of sweet berry notes to carry that strawberry. <laughs> Slight OG on there, just a little bit from the, from the Fruity Pebbles OG, um, but not as much gas. Yeah, maybe on, on the exhale, you maybe you'll taste it a little I more. <laughs> I think this is the best one. Woo! All this right. Great. Um, one final question? Um, no, I think we can just wrap it up. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> one final? All right, we'll do one final question. Right, for sure. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> All right, before, let me do our sponsor before I forget. Um, thank you, Puffco. Thank you, Punch. Thank you, Sumo Snacks. Thank you, Hi-Fi Hops. Uh, thank you, Third Wheel Fucking Podcast Studios. Uh, thank you, Stephen Fury. All right, question. We're all in a uh, plane crash in the middle of the desert. How many days until we decide we should eat Frank? Wow. Well, we first have to kill him. I would go. And at this point, it's already been ten days. Is he dead? Did like did he die? No. No, we got to kill We're him. We're all alive. Oh, that's a lot. Alive sad. and no one's like hurt. <laughs> yeah, I would go 60 60 days 60 days 3 months I appreciate that You die um in, in 72 right? hours without food or water just heads up Yeah but he don't got water no food is like I think you could go without food for like 2 months Water no Frank's looking pretty good. But he doesn't look quenching. The water would give me. The food, I could be fine. I'm killing Fury in two hours because I'm fucking hungry and I miss lunch. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. <laughs> All right. I'm a nice guy. Uh, thank you so much, Fury. Thank you, guys. This was so much fun. Thanks, I'm everybody. fucking blasted right now. Because if you get saved within two months, <laughs> the police are going to be like, why the fuck did you eat this guy? <laughs> you waited. And then you go to jail and you're like, I shouldn't have done it. See you. All right, I'm hot balls, Elsman. That was great.